David Mayo was Hubbard's personal auditor and helped write one of their top, top levels called Knots, and which is like new era, whatever. It's for OTs, for operating thetans. It's like Dianetics for OTs. And David Mayo wrote that and helped write it and worked with Hubbard. And then in 82, he ended up being declared a suppressive person. Now, again, people like me when I don't want to hear about it. I don't, don't tell me about it. I don't want to know about it. I, I know he's bad. It has to be. You know? But I knew he wasn't bad because he'd helped me personally. So it was a weird thing to me. So I went to the executives and I said, I don't get it. You know, it's like all these really good people. I mean, a lot of people left Scientology in 82, a ton of people. And I said, why are all these people getting declared and leaving? And they said, you know, we have this secret tape that most people don't get to hear, but we're going to let you hear it. So again, I listened to the tape, and it's Hubbard saying, you know, if you're an executive, by the nature of your business, you're going to commit what he called overts, which are bad deeds. Because you, can you can't make everybody happy all the time. So basically, it kind of explained it to me a little bit, where I could say, oh, OK. So they ended up, and he said, it's up to the public to make sure they get security checked. Now, security checking is where you're sitting with someone, you say, this is not auditing. I'm not auditing you. And you basically say, you know, have you ever stolen any money? Have you ever said anything bad about L. Ron Hubbard? Have you ever, you know, stolen any materials? I mean, it's amazing because we were at the top of OT7. We had to go back two times a year, every six months for a six-month check. And they would rattle off all these questions. Have you ever stolen any materials? Have you ever you know, done this, I mean, you know, and we're like, we're the top in Scientology. Why would you keep asking us this stuff? You know, it really gets old and you have to pay for it. It's $7,000 every 12 and a half hours. So that adds up. All right. So anyway, I'm moving along. I'm almost done because I can see you guys. It's a lot, you know, I could go on forever and ever. But what happens is I basically in 1990 got onto, I went to the Flagland base in 89. I'm, you have to go through a routing form every time you go through the church. I go through the routing form, and I get to a 15-year-old Italian kid and he, who's the ethics officer. And he opens up my folder, and he goes like this. You are not allowed on the flag land base. <laughs> and I go like this. Are you talking to me? <laughs> and I just keep doing that over and over. Are you, I do the taxi grab thing. And in my head, I'm ready to dive over the desk and strangle him. But Scientology would say that's an evil purpose, and I didn't want to get in trouble. So I just tried to be cool, and I just kept doing the, are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? And finally, they bring the head person, and they say, OK, that's not right. You know, it's true. You know, you've done a lot of contribution. You've helped out a lot. We'll allow you on the flag land base. I'm like, OK, great. So anyway, long story short, it all ends up getting back to I got to get off my medication, right? And I finally say, you know what? That's it. I'm not doing it. I want to write the head guys, who are now these top people that are running the church. Hubbard has died, which I forgot to get into. but. He died in the meantime, and David Miscavige took over, and these people are now running the church. And I write to them. I've written to them and said, you know, different things. So I write to them and say, this is wrong. I, you know, my doctor says I should take the medication, and he's a Scientologist. It, it's not a mind-altering <coughs> drug. You know, come on. Let's, it, it's okay. And they finally send all my folders up to the top thing, and it takes a month. And after a month, they wrote a thing saying, okay, if you have to take medication and you tried to get off and it didn't work, you can take your medication. So now I'm allowed to do OT7. And I get on it, and it doesn't work. I mean, I've heard what happens is you're in the church, and you hear, like, true story. This guy, Barry Klein, would say, well, I healed so-and-so's broken arm. And you think, really? You know, on OT7? And, you know, I healed this, and I healed that, and I went in session. And, you know, when we were in Portland, oh, the police weren't there. Well, that's because the OT7s are auditing the police. Right? They would say that. When the Berlin Wall went down, they announced at an event it went down because OT8 came out. <laughs> True story. Now, they, they have many magical powers, except they can never handle the bad things, right? You know, like the real things. Like, what about Iraq and Iran and all that stuff? Well, that doesn't, you know, we don't have enough OTs. That's the problem there, right? If you were out doing more, we would. <laughs> So anyway, it, it ends up, I start waking up once I get on OT7 because it's not working for me. And it, and it goes on and on and on. Finally, my best friend and auditor starts working with the Office of Special Affairs. Because these, what happened was some Scientologists left Scientology, they got on the internet, and they started telling secrets about Scientology. And just not like they're telling secrets, they were just talking about things that happened. But to Scientology, they saw it as they were telling their secrets. 
So they needed to cancel it. So they enter a cancel, cancel command trying to cancel the entire news group. And I've met people around the world who either saw that or read about it, computer people, and they went, you know, not on our watch. We don't know anything about the Scientologists, but you can't cancel anything on the internet. Well, Scientology went, oh, really? Well, we're going after you. And they bankrupt two people. Well, more people, you know how the internet is, they're just writing it and telling what's happening and it's coming up. And now more people are like, that's not right. You can't do that. And now they just keep doing it and more people keep getting on saying this is against free speech. It, you know, they sell freedom on one hand, but on the other hand, they enslave people. That's what they do. It's a it, that's the truth. And, and they trick you and they shut you off so you can't think and you can't talk. Well, now I'm at the top. I can't talk to anybody really about anything that I care about. I can't really think much of the BTs and clusters will read on the meter and then I have to spend all the money, right? So I'm like, okay, don't, th you don't even think about that. You know, for anything, you know, anything that might be something that they might read on in the next six months, I'm like, I'm not thinking about that. I'm gaining all the weight. I'm a mess. I'm just a complete mess, right? And I start waking up and I, my friend says, look, I want you to go on the internet and find these bad people who've posted our, our confidential materials. So I said, okay. And I'm really afraid of the internet because one of my friends went insane, true story. And my, my best friend, Bill Yachty, said that she went insane because she read the internet. Which I know it sounds ridiculous, but you know, when you're in the show, it was like, wow, really? I and mean, she was like jumping out back windows and she was a mess, right? So I was like, well, okay, I'm not looking at the internet. That, I don't need that. Plus, you gotta remember all the, you know, the, the, the money going, you know, cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching for anything that you get into that might not be cool, that gets, upsets you, then you gotta pay to fix it, right? So I'm just like, okay, I'm not reading the internet. 